Inner peace isn't something you're out to discover outside of you. That's why it's called inner peace. Because it's creating this somewhat of a dependency on something outside to determine the internal experience. I'm searching for inner peace. I want to find inner peace. I am the one who's like, ah, the more you search, the more you want to find, the more it will always be out there instead of in here. We all have inner peace. We're all enlightened. We all have spiritual wisdom to share. You might find inner peace in the Caribbean, but it's it's not a treasure map, that's for sure. <laughs> when you're little, you have inner peace. Like you're not sitting around wondering what's broken in you. The opposite of conflict is peace. If we are constantly searching for peace, but we aren't aware of how we manage conflict, no wonder there is a disharmony. In our field, we get a lot of different requests from people who have come from other areas um, of self-help, self-development, those types of things. And in this arena, there's a lot of different approaches, which is great. We love flavor. But when one theme keeps coming consistently, which has thrown individuals off, it warrants talking about. And one of those is finding inner peace. And what that has brought up for us is how important words are. Because when you start saying things like finding inner peace, it makes it sound like it's something outside of you. And we're all about this myth busting. And to us, finding inner peace, those semantics matter because that makes it outside of you. So we want to talk in this podcast specifically about stop searching and really start living and connect those dots about the truth of inner peace, right? Because inner peace isn't something you're out to discover outside of you. That's why it's called inner peace. Right. And it's also, it's not so not determined by what's outside of you either. So when you have inner peace, it's not directly correlated to what's going on outside of you and around you. Yes, exactly. And I know us being movie fanatics and the new Kung Fu Panda (laughs) is coming up. We can even incorporate some of that into the discussion because it's helpful to have points of reference outside. We're not saying don't do anything outside of you to help you understand the way within. But when you have everything saying, find inner peace, here is the way, and everything is outside of you, then is that really the journey that you're meant to take? And we have to start having those conversations because inner peace is in there. You always have it. Maybe you've covered it up with layers. And it feels very buried, but that's not as though you're finding something that you've never had. When you're little, and we talk about this so often, and you'll hear it echoed from many individuals, when you're little, you have inner peace. Like you're not sitting around wondering what's broken in you. That comes from layers and layers and layers. So what do we need to do to reconnect with our inner peace? Yes. What do we need to do to reawaken our inner peace? Yes. But to find our inner peace, you're going to be out on some treasure hunt outside of yourself for a very long time. And words matter. Words matter because it sets in our brains and in our thoughts the actions we're going to take, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you might find inner peace in the Caribbean, but it's it's not a treasure map. That's for sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, right. Because it's just a relaxation and vacation. But how do you how do you actually live in that space of inner peace? How do you keep it continual? How do you how do you make it more of a lifestyle than something that you Uh, temporarily attain? I think these are really good questions to dive in and to recognize that it's not 
And it's not tied to enlightenment either. And I think that's a really important thing that it's like, okay, those who are enlightened have inner peace. Sure. But also one can have inner peace and not have to live this perception of what it means to be enlightened. Yes. And I would offer we're all enlightened too. Yes. We all have inner peace. We're all enlightened. Yes. We all have spiritual wisdom to share, right? We're all spirits embodied in these forms with wisdom to share. Mm -hmm. So when we keep pulling ourselves back and saying, oh, well, they have it, but I don't. That's where we need to start asking ourselves, why are we separating ourselves from the whole? Why are we saying they have it, but I don't? When the truth is, it is inside of you. And the true journey isn't finding it in someone else. Now, when you see it in someone else, it might be helping you understand what do I desire to discover within me and reconnect with. So that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful sign to say, hey, I appreciate that in you. Now that's signaling to say that I have it. Maybe my opportunity is to reawaken or rediscover that within myself. And once I do that, then I can find another attribute maybe in someone else, or maybe I find a new one within myself. But I now know, hey, I would really like to rediscover that within myself. That's where you can go outside and say, what are tools that might help me connect with that? Mindfulness being a wonderful one, right? But in what way? Because mindfulness is so huge. That is such a vast place to say, oh, I'm going to do mindfulness practices. All right. Well, if I'm searching for inner peace, I'm searching for inner peace. Mindfulness is going to be outside of me, right? right. But is that really going to guide me to inner peace? We have to ask ourselves that. Or is that going to help me appreciate the external world, which is still such a beautiful gift? But is that step guiding me to inner peace? Yeah. If it's not correlated to what's going on around you, it's you determining the harmony within your form, yourself, aligning your physical, your mental, your emotional, and your spiritual, then wherever you are shouldn't actually matter to what's going within. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. I mean, not to say that being out in nature in a walk or meditating in a garden or something like that can't, it's not like it can't help. But if you're only experiencing it, the perception of inner peace in that type of setting, then are you really having, do you actually have inner peace? Are you living that lifestyle? And, and, and bringing, learning how to bring it into all parts of your life. So then it becomes more of escapism than it does actual true tool that helps you throughout all aspects of, of your, your experience of life. And so that's why I think it's so important for us to continue to discuss this. There's, again, we will always say there's nothing inherently wrong. If that is the journey you are on and the one that you're navigating, you're still finding benefit, right? You are going to find benefit by gathering tools outside and appreciating the external world. It's a kid. But you have to ask, what is my goal? What is my true goal? If I'm saying my true goal is inner peace, then you're not going to find it outside of yourself. We have to say what tools are going to bring me internal into the internal calm and then align it with that. So mindfulness practices that drive me inward then instead of into the external world. So... We talk about the body awareness meditations, right? Those are mindfulness meditations where you are connecting with your own body to be mindful of what's going on 
with your form. Because if you're in pain or if you're feeling anxiousness in your body, it's really challenging to connect with your inner peace because your body isn't in a state of peace and rest. So maybe your first movement to reconnecting with inner peace is to create physical calm, right? That's not something outside of you. That's something very much within you. So finding a body awareness meditation, and we have one that you can find out on silentyourinnercritic.com, the yeah. book that we're releasing. Under the free resources. Under the free resources. But there are many out there. Mm -hmm. So find one that fits for you where you're actually going through and understanding, all right, where am I holding tension? Where am I feeling anxious? Is my breath too shallow? Am I breathing too rapidly? Am I really tense in my abdomen? Am I really tense in my shoulders? What is it that I'm really feeling? And this might be something you do every night before you go to bed so that you get a great night's sleep because that could be another thing that causes you to not feel as inner peaceful as you could, right? But that's mindfulness of your inner world, your inner landscape. And we begin to make those inner connections. And through that, we can, that will help us begin to understand our connection to the external world. But that diving inward, we're not finding it outside. We're rediscovering it and reconnecting to it internally. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And breath work can be a great part of that too. It's another tool that is internal that pulls you from maybe even a sympathetic to a parasympathetic, get really calm, as you're saying. And so, and then that's a, that meditation you're talking about, that mindfulness, body awareness and relaxation, using the breath to facilitate that is just incredible. So those are, those are the kind of tools that, right, I, I, when you think about mindfulness and all these amazing tools that are out there, how many of them are externally facing, how many of them are internally facing. And so that's a good intention and purpose to bring into the inner peace side of it. Because I could see why unintentionally one would maybe get into mindfulness, start using these external ones and saying, well, why can't I feel that? Why do I still feel anxious inside? And because it's creating this somewhat of a dependency on something outside to determine the in internal experience. And so flipping that script and shifting the tool to be to match the intention of the desired goal which is more internal peace then that really takes it to the next level and i love that so thank you for for clarifying one thing that kind of came up for me during that though was um you know what are other reasons why individuals might be in a state of internal disharmony and it might actually stem from lack of self-worth, for example. You know, if, if that might be causing a, an internal struggle, because on a soul level, we understand our worth. We, we know we don't devalue who we are, what we are, why we are. But in the human experience, there's so much around us constantly telling all of our externals, telling us you know, why we're not enough and that you know, how we live is not enough, or the job that we chose is not enough, or, you know, the people around us are telling us that we're not enough. Like all the marketing campaigns are constantly telling us how we are not enough. And so that's difficult when you have so much around you bombarding you. And so it would, that would definitely get you in a state of, of that sympathetic, that flight or flight, you know, feeling like, you're, you're missing that harmony within. And so I think that's just another aspect to, to focus on when looking at internal peace of, of how much of our lack of inner peace is due to the fact that we aren't aware of how much we love ourselves, how much, you know, how much more that we can actually grow our self-worth. 
I think that's a great point. And part of that, I would say, is how much are we looking at the external inputs that we allow in, right? Because all of those that you went through, I get to decide what I allow in, right? So as you went through that, I'm like, I hear that and I agree. But what I have throttled my social media to now and anything that I watch as far as even shows, those that I surround myself with, they are, I have designed that from the inside so that it feeds my internal peace. Not that we don't get conflict because we do, but then I have this space that has been nurtured and fed from the outside because I've curated that so that when conflict comes, I'm not in a state of chaos to not be able to lovingly meet that and say, I understand that when conflict is in my space, that individual or that group or wherever it's coming from, they're spinning. And so I hear you, I love you, I honor your perspective, but I'm not taking that on for you. And so I'll hear you and I'll understand your perspective, but I will not take your chaos. And I will have an exchange and I'll receive the information without receiving the chaos, the fear, the other things that come with it. But that's only because I've chosen what I surround myself with the majority of my time, including the external influences that pose with that. And again, I'll take that back to a mindful practice, right? I've mindfully decided what goes into my social media feed, right? It's not things that make me feel anxious on the inside. And I had to take time to figure that out. Like what's making me feel anxious versus what's allowing me to feel loved, nurtured, and cared for. People around me, what's making me feel anxious and what's making me feel loved, nurtured, and cared for. Not that I never spend time with people who make me feel anxious. I do. But how much time, right? And that's where we can begin to understand from the inside what our external world is doing and ask ourselves those questions. And I would like to provide a list of questions for individuals that you can ask yourself because we have to be able to start asking ourselves these questions. What do I feel when in a social such situation, this type of an event occurs? Like we can't, I won't go into all of it because we'll be here for hours, but there are so many different questions that we can put ourselves into scenarios and say, what do I feel in this scenario? And we'll learn about ourselves so that when that situation arises, we know for our own inner peace, what we're going to do, what actions we're going to take, right? It's part of creating boundaries. Love it. Hi, I'm Amber. Thank you so much for watching. If you could do me just a quick favor and click like and subscribe wherever you are, it helps us more than we can possibly say. Absolutely. Um, You brought up an interesting word, um, which I think is so relevant as just a, a whole topic, is conflict. The opposite of conflict is peace. If we are constantly searching for peace, but we aren't aware of how we manage conflict, no wonder there is a disharmony. And so not only do we not, as a society, focus on how conflict resolution can occur, we often think that is only external. And so you bringing up this point that conflict is also internal and a barrier for us to be able to find. Rephrase that too. <laughs> Re- <laughs> <So easy. laughs> yes, so it is easy. so easy. That's why there are so uh, many titles yes. of so many people come and they're like, I'm, I'm searching for inner peace. 
I want to find inner peace and more like, uh, I, uh, I'll i own it. I'm like, I am the one who's like, ah, oh, the more you search, the more you want to find, the more it will always be out there instead of in here. Right. Yeah. Well, that was a perfect example of just how uh, even marketing, just even though I know it, we're talking about it, uh -huh. <laughs> it still flows through. It's in there. Yeah, it's in there. It's uh, And so us being able to recognize that it's it redirected, that it's internal, but man, learning how to actually manage the conflict within bringing the awareness that we're actually in conflict within ourselves. You know, that's, that's one of the keys to inner peace is like, if we're constantly fighting how we think, how we feel, you know, what, what we should be thinking, what we should be feeling or, you know, how we felt in the past or what's going to happen in the future. And is that related to right now? There's so much inner, inner conflict that's happening within us. We're seeing how the world outside of us is not maybe the way that we would like it to be. Or we're seeing other friends or family doing things that maybe we're like, ah, oh, maybe they should do this. You know, and it's it's so it's all these externals that are creating conflict within us. And we haven't really brought that focus and the awareness on how do I how do I first understand what conflict is going on within me and how do I create a resolution around it? so that I can experience that inner peace within me. And that's not going to eliminate conflict as a whole. That's why it's called managing conflict, not eliminating conflict. Yes. Right? And it's a big, big difference. It'd be lovely to eliminate conflict. <laughs> but sometimes sometimes friction is important. Yeah. You, you don't you want to eliminate uh -oh. conflict. We grow. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and and conflict doesn't always equal violence either, and I think that's that's maybe another one of those that kind of the moment we think conflict, we think fight or like we have to put up a shield or we have to, you know, attack. Like that's what conflict is. But the reality of conflict can be peaceful. Conflict friction doesn't have to be jarring. It can be just enough of a pattern interrupt to make you shift your thoughts and your ideas and then effectively shift how you approach the world, starting from the internal and moving into the external. Exactly. What a great point. Like navigating through that inner landscape to get into that inner peace and that's why i brought up um kung fu panda because you even named your car master Ugwe. yes <laughs> master oogs yes <laughs> because it helps as a consistent reminder that even when like, what is the itchy nose yeah. inner, inner peace? Yes, <laughs> let me say that. <laughs> we might have to throw that clip in here <laughs> because it reminds us that even when something is going on on the outside, it doesn't shift what's going on on the inside. It doesn't have to. But when we have conflict going on on the inside, that's much more challenging. You can ignore something landing on your nose a lot easier than you can ignore something that's raging inside of you. Yeah. So the tools for how to navigate when conflict is going on inside of you, those should be the tools that you're gathering first and foremost, right? Because those will help you with external conflict, but more often than not, the conflict is within, right? So such a good point. And if you watch Kung Fu Panda, there are a lot of them at this point, but if you watch them, that's Poe, the main character, mayor, mm -hmm. <laughs> in the movie. That's what he fights with, his own self-worth, his own skills, like all of these things. And he's still you know, navigating into inner peace. And I believe that's what this new movie will actually be about. Yeah. Is true. the inner peace. Yeah. How to, how to shift from inner conflict to inner peace. Absolutely. And so we haven't seen it yet, <laughs> but it will be a wonderful opportunity to, to understand how it's being delivered and when you're talking about curating what's coming in from the outside, you know, we talk about these movies because often it allows us to have that reflection 
and then ask the question, how can I adapt this for the journey I'm going on within myself? I love it. Um, and I think that kind of brings up an opportunity to discuss kind of another internal tool, and that's the power of silence. A lot of a lot of the issues centered around conflict, especially internally, is the noise that it makes. It's constant thinking, constant kind of like this barrage of thoughts that is almost has this feeling of attacking your own inner presence, right? And so sometimes the best thing you can do is feel that inner silence to redirect the inner conflict into a more peaceful manner. And that's just experiencing silence, allowing that, that noise. You know, there's a reason why there's a difference between noise and harmony, right? And it comes to music and sound. And so you know, that's all vibration. So are our thoughts. It's all vibration. And so when we can experience that silence and be intentional and pattern interrupt as we're talking about into that silence and allow that to maybe that's really that could be the answer that you're looking for in whatever internal conflict you're experiencing maybe it's just when was the last time you allowed the internal to get a break not just phoning it in kind of break but an intentional, purposeful break. Yes. And I know for individuals, it can be challenging to just sit in silence, right? We have a, a wonderful world where we have access to so many things. If you are sitting in your board, you have your devices that you can hop on. You have shows you can watch. You There's never a lack of something to do, which is such a great gift. Like I see the beauty in that. But along with great gifts also comes the need to monitor what that's doing to you, right? And as you said, if you don't take downtime to just sit, and let yourself rest, not just sleep rest, but sensory rest, then when do your senses get the opportunity to take you into your internal landscape? Right. And it is challenging to just sit in silence without your thoughts popping in and I personally would offer, I'm not saying that sitting in silence means you're not thinking because that's a tall order, right? And I am personally well aware that that's not stage one of the internal flow. So then what do you do when you're sitting in silence? That silence gives you the opportunity to actually be with those thoughts, to understand what your thoughts are telling you, right? How do you reconnect with inner peace if you're not taking the time to listen to your own thoughts the same way that you would listen to your best friend who has something going on in their life? You need to be the one listening to your thoughts to understand what you are telling yourself. Mm. So that you can, if you need to, write them down, see the pattern in it, see if there's something that keeps coming up over and over again, and understand, is there something I am attempting to tell myself that I need to take action on? Maybe it is that I need to reduce or increase the amount of time I spend with certain people, or maybe it's that a show that I'm watching is actually causing me agitation. You know, it can be any number of things. But if we're not listening to our thoughts and taking that amount of time to really be with them, then they're going to keep spinning. But just like our best friend, once they feel heard, you'll find that they start to actually 
be like, oh, you paid attention to me? Okay. <laughs> then I don't need to say that anymore. You get it. And they start to subside. Then you get to the point where once you feel heard by you, suddenly you start getting moments of silence where thoughts don't happen. And then that gap gets bigger and that gap gets bigger and that gap gets bigger. Pretty epic. Not gonna lie. Very. It's very profound though. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just being willing to be in silence. That's a great tool. Thank you for, for bringing that one forward. And being willing to be in silence with other people. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough at first. I remember the first few times like we sat in silence and I was like, are you mad at me? <laughs> you know, like what's going on? It took a little bit and then I realized that it wasn't then I was letting the external define my internal. Yeah. And like you were very happy and just relaxed. And I was like, Well, the conflict again is within me. I'm the one not being not allowing myself to relax and creating situations uh that weren't even happening in my head and determining the way that I was experiencing the world. And so when I mean, you can actually, the, the beauty of it was like when we are together and we do sit in silence, it's actually showing the comfortability that we have, the, the love, and it's palpable in that sense. And so it can just be another way, another beautiful way of expressing love. You know, we talk about touch and we talk about um, voicing but we don't often talk about how powerful the silence of love is yeah and when you do find individuals who have that connection to inner knowing inner peace and feel very strong in that mm -hmm. then sitting in silence speaks louder than any words or actions. The energy of that is so strong. It is. That's profound. Like that is the true profound experience that people, you'll hear people talking about as a spiritual or existential type of a, a feeling. And it's wonderful. But it's not because it's found outside, right? It is these individuals took the time to do what was needed inside mm. to get to that creamy center, <laughs> that like nuggety center of themselves and then stay there. And that's the, the part of it too. Like once you get there, it's like working out. It's like doing all the things that we do. If you're training for something, you don't just stop training once you get there. Olympic athletes aren't like, oh, I'm in the Olympics. I made it. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm just going to stop training. I made it. <laughs> I'll be fine once I get there. No, like that's when you actually start training even harder yeah. because you know you're there and it requires that focus and that diligence to just keep it in that space. And so once you have inner peace and you've reconnected, because it's always been there, you've always had it. But once you've reconnected and you're like, oh, yes, this is it. This is it. Then you continue to foster that, to stay connected, because it's not as though you connect and then you have nothing left to do, right? So that's what I would offer. It's not a once and done. No. <laughs> Magic bullets, here we go. <laughs> so, and part of how you can do that is by watching awesome podcasts that feed your soul. Yes. So individuals can explore. I would like to believe that our podcast feeds the soul. Um, up to every individual to discover that for themselves, but there's a lot out on our channel to discover. So I think it would be great if they just went out, started looking. <laughs>